Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in this video, we're going to look at what I thought were the top 10 things of the .NET 7 release. Of course, there's like probably like 50 or more things that uh, they released. So this is kind of like my top 10. We're not going to really go into detail in this video, but make sure to subscribe. And then in further videos, I'm going to go into detail into some of these. The first one that I really liked was the loading circle. So before for Blazor, it used to just be like loading like this when it was loading the application, which didn't really look very professional. But now it gives you this kind of like little circle. So it's a very small thing, but it really makes a difference when you're creating a Blazor application. The next one is the crazy performance improvement. So basically all the basic functions link string manipulation, all this stuff got crazy improvements. You can see here like from eight nanoseconds to one nanosecond. And oh, it, it has become kind of like a thing for every .NET release. They're just getting faster and faster. This doesn't mean that you can start writing bad code. If you have bad code, it's still going to be slow. But this makes your bad code a little bit faster and your good code really fast. And I'm not going to go into all the details like they literally have all these of improvements that they did so it's just crazy make sure to check it out and write faster programs with dotnet 7. the next one uh it's kind of like a small one but it really made a difference for me because two days ago i was actually like writing this and i was like oh it would be way better if you have something simple like let's say a list of strengths before you had to do like order by and just do this lambda expression now you can actually just do order and order descending so it's very small but I don't know, I really like that. The next one is rate limiting. So before, if you had a dependency that had certain rate limits, you had to kind of like manually write your queue and do all this stuff. Now you have different rate limitings, like either sliding, fixed. It just makes it so much easier. So then you just rate limit your own application and then you manage kind of like the rate of your calling your dependencies and better user experience altogether. Then the next one is not really completely new. The new thing was that you can change the value on the cookie consent form for GDPR. But I actually didn't know that in .NET 6 they did GDPR consent cookie that you could do it really quickly. I actually had to implement it manually, so I'm really happy that now you could actually just go here, copy like 20 lines of code, and all of a sudden you get the cookie banner and the cookie acceptance and all that stuff. So that's really cool that .NET has that. And the next one is gRPC. So gRPC, if you're not familiar with it, it's kind of like a new way to communicate between microservices and so on. And it's kind of becoming like, and it's very efficient, way more efficient than REST. The problem is that if you were using gRPC and you also wanted to offer a, a REST API, you kind of had to add code for both. Now you don't. They actually uh, added JSON transcoding. So now if you have customers that call your REST API or they don't want to learn how to do gRPC, then they can just use REST and you use gRPC and you make it faster for your service to service or client to service. So that one's really cool as well. Then they talked about hot reloading uh, for Blazor getting better. I really hope so because I kind of had given up on it. So it's good to see that they're still working on it and hopefully it'll become really good. The next one is Blazor hybrid authentication authorization. So if you were building .NET MAUI applications, there was really no support for it. It was kind of like, hey, you figure it out. Now there's actual support and how to actually do it. So it would have saved me a lot of time this year that I was working on creating my own version of it. So it's good to see that Blazor is maturing and also Blazor MAUI is maturing. Before it was kind of like, I mean, I've been using it in production for two years and it's been good, but it was kind of like for the adventurous at heart that like we wanted to solve the problems and everything. Now it's becoming to a place where it's a stable platform. You don't have to think about like, okay, is it my code or is it the platform having issues? The next one is support for complex authentication. So basically, before if you had, let's say, um, I'm going to use this video because it's actually a really popular video of mine, that if you use AAD authentication to authenticate into your app and then you want to call Azure AD Graph, you couldn't do it with the same token because you require different scopes. 
And what he had to do is actually kind of like request two tokens that the user experience wasn't great because basically the user experience felt like they were authenticating twice to your application. Now they actually solve that and actually can create complex tokens in the back end. So that's really cool. It's been a feature that I've been asking for two years. So I'm really happy that that one is done. And the last one that got me a little bit excited, not exactly because of what they created, but because they're actually spending some time on this is adding the crypto support for Blazor. Um, I don't know why it wasn't supported or it wasn't a priority. Uh, I feel that creating encryption keys and public and private keys is something that should be available in the client since it's something you use for securing your application and you shouldn't be creating keys somewhere else. So I'm glad that they're starting to do it. They're just doing basically hashing algorithms and a little bit of AES. So I wouldn't really say like, yay, they have implement implemented cryptography, but it's a step in the right direction and hopefully they'll keep improving this. So yeah, those are my top 10 things that I liked about .NET 7. Uh, let me know which ones did you like. If I missed one that you think should have been covered, let me know down below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.